Algebra 2 cram, New York State, Algebra 2 regions. But no worries, this is a common core cram session, so it can be used for any Algebra 2 course throughout the entire world. So shout out to the UK, India, Moldova, Somalia, Canada, Florida, um, Texas, Illinois, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and everywhere else in the world. Functions, question 15, find the inverse function. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com. And there is prior knowledge necessary in order to master this cram session. You're going to have to view the function basics cram series on the inverse of a function. That's concept number 10 in function basics. So be sure to watch that in order to master the material in this session. All right. Find the inverse function, question 15. Find the inverse of the function f of x is equivalent to x divided by x minus 2. Definitely press pause if necessary, and I'll give you a moment to formulate your solution. All right. Okay, so the first thing um, that I need you to understand is that the term f of x or the output of a function is synonymous with the term y. So these two terms, y and f of x, are equivalent expressions because they both represent the output of a function or the dependent variable. Hence, in an effort to find the inverse of the original function f of x, which uh, has the notation f inverse of x, it looks like a f raised to a negative one exponent, although that is not a negative one exponent, which you'll see at the end. It's just notation for the inverse function. Uh, what we're going to have to do is basically switch the x and y terms and resolve for y, but the y that we're solving for is going to be the f inverse dependent variable. Okay, so here we have our original function. And we have our f of x, x notation. We're going to switch to x, y notation with this concept in mind, okay? These two terms are synonymous. And now, as I previously indicated, we're going to have to switch our x and y terms and that this resolving for y will yield the inverse function. So after switching, this is what our function now becomes. This is the first or rudimentary step in creating our inverse function. We switch our x and y terms. Now we're just going to re-isolate y, which in the end, when completely isolated by itself, is going to represent f inverse of x. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in order to do that is obviously cross multiply. Some of the other steps that we need to take might not be so obvious, but this one is kind of staring us in the face. And when we cross multiply, we get that x times y minus 2 is equivalent to y. Now, in an effort to re-isolate the y terms by themselves and find out what y is equivalent to, we're going to have to collect all the y terms on one side of the um, equation, okay? Um, and basically, what we can do for that is just... Um, divide by y minus 2. Actually, no, 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 that's going to be, that's not going to be good because this is still, this y is still going to be caught up. What we're going to do is, it's going to seem kind of long and circuitous, but we have, what we have to do is basically distribute the x, okay? And when we do that, we get that x times y minus 2x is equivalent to y. And um, the next step, that we're basically going to have to take is to bring all the y terms over to the left hand side. Y left because we like seeing y on the left hand side in standard um, algebra done in English and we're going to bring all the non y terms over to the right hand side okay. So what we're going to have to do in order to do that is subtract y on both sides 
and add 2x to both sides. And after doing so, we wind up with this. x times y minus y equals 2x. Now the next step might not be so obvious, but it's actually going to be putting us where we want to be. We want an isolated y term. So we simply are going to factor out y from this expression, okay? And we get that y times x minus 1 is equivalent to 2x. Now the last thing that we have to do to completely isolate, isolate y is divide by x minus 1, and then y will be by itself, and all the non-y terms, or, or all the x terms, and um, strictly numerical terms will be on the right-hand side of the equation. So we get that y is equivalent to 2x divided by x minus 1. But a little bit earlier, I told you that this y is not equivalent to this y. Obviously, this y represents f inverse of x. So we're going to go back to our f of x, x notation, indicating that this y is actually the result of the inverse function of this function x. So the notation is going to look basically like this. f inverse of x is equivalent to 2x divided by x minus 1. And here we see that f inverse of x looks like f raised to the negative uh, 1 but it's actually not that, so don't confuse. And this would be our answer. f inverse of x is equivalent to 2x divided by x minus 1. Thanks for tuning in.